What's going on, everybody? This is the new assignee to AEW, Shane Swerve Strickland, and you are watching the Battleground Podcast. And guess where I'm going to be April 1st in Garland, Texas? Ring of Honor, Supercard of Honor versus Alex Zane. First time ever dream match. The only way you're going to go up and show up to these shows, got to get your tickets, baby. ROHTix.com. Whose house? Swerve's house. Let's get it. What's up, you guys? Welcome into iHeartRadio's official wrestling podcast, the Battleground Podcast. Friday night is a big night. ROH returning to pay-per-view in Garland, Texas. Super card of honor. Of course, you can grab your tickets right now at ROHTix.com. I'm going to bring in my tag team partner, Eli. What's up, buddy? Greetings and salutations. Hey, buddy. It's it's kind of a different setting for me, and uh, you know we're, we're pretty excited uh, with what's going on today. And normally, you could tell uh, by Eli's clothing who... Is going to be on our show, but I guess you don't have this guy's merchandise, which is not good because he's probably going to be pretty upset with you. I, I mean, it's sold out. I think it's. I mean, if, if if I ordered it, I wouldn't have had it in time anyway. And then my old Ring of Honor stuff was when I was a big guy, so I can't fit it. So, so let's go ahead and bring our guest in. Swerve is on the show with us, my man. What's How going on, everybody? Hello, hello. Hey. hey. Thanks for being on the show today with us. And, of course, you got a big match Friday, which we kind of want to talk about that here in just a little bit. But uh, I, I want to ask you this, you know, after only two matches within the company, you're already one of the most over talent. I mean, everybody talked about you coming into AEW. What has kind of been your reaction to the crowds since signing with AEW? Um, it's been welcoming, man. I've been humbled for, for sure. Uh, very grateful to the reception I've been getting in like pretty much every arena I've been going to, you know, um, whether it be the fact that I'm like just running out, making a save to Keith Lee with a chair and getting that reception, whether we're like, I'm just staying late after the show goes off air and we're just like vibing with the audience and chatting with them. And they're just like, like they, they've been sitting there all night. They've seen like 20, 25 matches and stuff. And they still have that energy to output and just like sing along with Keith Lee's Bask in Our Glory and Who's House Swerve's House and stuff. It's it's been it's been it's been amazing. Like I just that's a really genuine um uh relationship I have with the fan base from all, all the 10 plus years of independent wrestling I've been doing. It's st it's still sticking with them. For sure. Yeah, the the fan base within AEW is just unlike anything else and obviously <laughs> they're embracing you wholeheartedly um jump into this friday obviously you have a mass massive challenge uh, at supercard of honor uh with alex zane obviously known through the indies had a stint in nxt uh this this match has a lot of people buzzing uh what do you think are your keys to success uh this weekend against zane um to to come out with the with the w i would say aggression um I'm, I really, a lot of people um, like to talk about the fact that I'm one of the most finesse, smoothest wrestlers in the, in the world and what I do and stuff. But I feel like one of the keys, key things to what's gotten me so far and pushed me to such another level is the fact that I bring such a different aggressive approach to how I um, attack my opponents. It's not always just smooth and finesse. And like Alex Zane is one of like the most athletically gifted in ring performers I've seen in the in the industry for a while now. And I've seen him. I, we were there together in NXT for the short little period of time. Never got to get in the ring together or practice or train or anything like that. But um, just seeing what I know from him, like he he brings another type of smoothness, a different type of smoothness, different type of agility different type of athleticism to the ring but over the 13 plus years i've been doing this i've always seen somebody new bring something like that to the game right. you know um and i've always counteracted that with aggressiveness like if you date back to my wwe time you've seen that with the leon ruffs you know i, I attack with aggressiveness that's always my counter approach i don't like to match athleticism with athleticism especially the fact that i get older it's like harder to keep up with that, you know, especially when you see like 
Alex Zanes, the Blake Christians, the Dante Martins, the Darius Martins. You know, these guys are the young, these are the young crop of dudes that are just like doing it. They're grasping that style so easily mm-hmm. and just like taking it to a new heights. And that's something I just can't compete with. So I'm always attacked with like, the, I always go with friction. Yeah. You know? Right. Well, you even got people. I mean, Nick Wayne was he seventeen? And I mean, he's already like, you yeah, know, and kind of cut from that Alex Zane's kind of swerve cloth too. So I mean, like they're they're getting younger by the day too, man. Yeah, it's scaring me. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's like trying to keep up, and you're like, yeah, no, we're gonna have to go a different game plan for yeah. this. But, yeah, uh, like Nick, harder, not harder. It's crazy because yeah. like Nick Wayne's like sixteen, and my oldest daughter's twelve, so that's not that far off of the age gap. I mean, that's or, unbelievable. You know. Well, and you also see like uh, you know Brody Junior getting involved in stuff, and he's what nine, nine or ten. Nine. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like but, the 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 crop of upcoming wrestlers. It's going to be tremendous to see what they're going to do uh, at yeah. a young age. Because uh, I mean, speaking of Ring of Honor, you had Roxy, who was what the youngest uh, women's champion ever in Ring mm-hmm. of Honor. Yeah. Um, so it just goes to show that there's going to be a lot of talent that we're going to see uh, in the next several years, and th- we're just getting started. Uh, of course, this Friday night, ROH returns to pay-per-view. Uh, Super Card of Honor, you can grab your tickets right now at rohticks.com. You can also watch it on Fight uh, as well. And, uh, you know, let me ask you this, because a lot of us in the wrestling world, we were super excited, and we were kind of uh, surprised when this happened. But what was your reaction when Tony Khan made the announcement, hey, I bought ROH. And what are you most excited to see with him running ROH? I was a little, I was, I was worried and concerned for a second because like, I was like, man, um, they just, I just spoke with ROH about getting on the uh, super card of honor, like a couple months back. And then um, I got signed with AW and I was like, oh man, I hope I'm still able to do that show. And then all of a sudden the, the, the announcement happens in the middle of the ring. And I'm like, oh, okay. I guess that's why I didn't hear any fuss about it. So that's yeah. hard. Not, uh, that's pretty cool. Um, I've right. always been a fan of Ring of Honor for a long time. I have a lot of friends that are that came up through there and um, friends that currently still work there, you know, like the Shane Taylor promotions and like Kenny Kings and guys like that I've been friends with for years. So I'm glad to see that we're not losing another promotion out there and we're keeping it alive and keeping it going for another place for people to hone their craft. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. Like, I think that's that's going to be a great breeding ground for guys with the that are young and that need that. Um, I feel like there's times where like jump into live TV, like on a big promotion like AEW and stuff like that is it's a lot for someone young and new who hasn't necessarily adapted to live TV like that yet. Exactly. You know, like going out there and just like performing is one thing, but really adapting to that new setting is is, it takes years to actually like really become more like really faceted with it it, to get comfortable with it so with like a ring of honor i think there's a lot of guys like a lee johnson uh uh, would be great to be like a star studded like uh acquisition for ring of honor a lee moriarty's you know like those like those dante martins to really like i think they should be doing both AEW, Dynamite, Rampage, Dark, and Ring of Honor because they need that seasoning. They need all the reps they can get. So I'm glad to see that Ring of Honor. And with and with uh, under Tony's uh, Tony Khan's control with it and running it, he's not going to forget about those guys. He's going to want to tap into those that he's going to want to like bring those guys full potential up. He right. wants to bring that out of them. So yeah. I think those guys need to just be like on the road consistently. All the time, you're go- they're going to get tired and burnt, but that's what that's what makes greatness. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. glad to see there's and bring those like uh, the, the old the old um, Ring of Honor veterans back as well to work with those guys. Dudes build like build stories with those guys, like build these rivalries. You know, not just having just match after match after match, but to actually build something with these guys to learn so they can learn and really grow. You know, I know what it's like to have an arch nemesis, you know, that yeah. go from town to town to town to town, um, telling these stories to these different audiences, different cities, get, like building like how I had to build my name through it for many years, like having these 
like rivalries with like a Darby Allen or Riddle, you know, or, you know, a Phoenix and Penta and all these different cities, these guys got to do the same thing rather than to have matches and matches and matches, but actually build like rivalries. So these cities understand when dynamite comes to town, they have a fresh history with what these guys done together. Right. Yeah. yeah that's, I mean, yeah. That's that's a very good answer. Um, we uh, we got a couple uh, uh, fan questions. We sent out a, some stuff on social, and we we picked a couple. Um, our buddy Antonio, who is a uh, at Acelia Matic, asked, um, "Which locker room do you feel most comfortable and confident in? Was it the NXT locker room, or is it in the AEW locker room?" Um, AEW locker room still new. Um. It's still new to me because I haven't. I've only been there a couple weeks. NXT locker room was different, and I like it was a more of a. It was a big challenge. I wouldn't say more of a challenge, but it was a big challenge, you know, because not only are you having to impress like this, the, it's not you're not impressed, but you're trying to prove yourself amongst guys that's been there for years in the WWE system and NXT, and guys that's coming back from the main roster who's done it all and everything, seen it all, done pay per views, done manias, and are coming back to NXT. And stuff like that. You're also trying to prove things to like Sean and Road Dog and Triple H and William Regal at the time, and whoever, whatever guest was coming down for the week at the time, and stuff like that. Like that, that once you once you tap into like showing those guys, like they can't break you. Their pressure that they put on you to perform. Once you kind of crack through that. Like, I I would like come through the back after uh, uh, I know I knocked it out of the park and I look Triple H in the eye and shake his hand. I'm like, I told you. And then I keep walking, you know, <laughs> like I, I, I used to thrive off of that, that like, damn, like we put a lot of pressure on this guy and he's still like, OK, OK. After that, your confidence is just like through the roof. There's nothing. There's nothing nobody else can tell you. So I say like my confidence in NXT was high at an all time high, especially when like Sean be like, "Well, see, I told him, I told yeah. you guys." Like, like you know, he would ha- he would have to show tell the rest of the people at the and the rest of the, like the staff, like the like just like that's that's one of the guys. That's one. And you know, I I I, li- I I like thrived off of that. You know, that's when like there's times where like people talk about like it, there's um that 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 WWE system can like break you and like like chip away at you but if you like if you look at look that in the face and really like challenge it cuz like they love to buck at you but if you buck back at them oh man there's nothing there's nothing that you can do they can't do there's right. nothing that you're going to feel like n- n- there's nothing you can't do when you like like climb out on Olympus and smack Zeus in the face who else is there to be afraid of yeah, <laughs> yeah. nobody that's a good point. Man, that, that's a good point. Of course, uh, ROH returns to pay-per-view this Friday night. It is Super Card of Honor. Uh, Swerve Strickland's got his hands full with Alex Zane in a big match. Uh, and speaking of Ring of Honor, another fan question. Our good friend Matthew Lopez at Matthew669691 wants to know, is there an ROH legend you wish you could have faced in an ROH ring? Uh, in, the, in the heyday or now? Uh, I believe yeah. in the heyday, and let's go with now, too. Let's go both. Uh, for me, Nigel McGinnis. Ooh. Nigel was incredible. Like he just had like a ring presence that was just like unlike anybody else. So, and I don't think his name gets brought up enough as like one of the greatest like ROH talents of all time. Like it's easy, like it's easy to go to the Punks, the Joes, the Brian Danielsons, you know, like even the Austin Aries, the um, Kentas, the Tyler Blacks, the Claudios, the Genericos, the Kevin Steens. You know, Nigel's name needs to be brought up in that that conversation a lot more, in my opinion. Agreed. Yeah, for sure. Um, we think he's next for the Ring of Honor Hall of Fame. That kind as of, he should be. Yeah, it sounds like a no brainer. Um, as he should be. Um, so recently, you stole the show uh, against Ricky Starks for the FTW uh, Championship on Rampage. In the end, that match didn't go as planned. We had a feeling there was going to be some. You know, uh, Tom Fullery involved. Um, our friend Gerald Ryan um, at Bear Down Three Sixteen asks quite bu- bluntly, "How do you feel about losing only your second televised match uh, in AEW?" I guess I got to go on a ten 
10 match win streak now. Yeah, I guess you gotta <laughs> like you know get back like, in the good graces of draw. Yeah. <laughs> like do do you watch football and get upset when like Tampa Bay loses their second game? No, right. they gotta go on their win streak in the next 15 weeks. Yep. Yeah. Like that means keep watching the show. That means like no like you, if um, if somebody's like one of their favorites, they're not gonna like just fall off the bandwagon when they like fall down. Mm. You you keep rocking with them. You keep you follow them through the rest of the season. You follow them through the rest of the year. You know? Right. Like and, you you keep at it with them. Like right. so people need to stop looking at like someone losing early as like, oh, they're this is this is disappointing. Like there's you're, disappointment you're in life. There's disappointment yeah. in sports. There's disappointment everywhere. You know? Right. Like Spider Man beat got his ass beat with Green Goblin early on. We didn't count him out, <laughs> you know? Right. Like right. you keep rocking with them, you stay with them. You know, right. stop jumping off of like the train when every when things don't go right. Like I'm still in a I'm still in a positive mood. I'm still very fortunate and very happy with my positioning in AEW. I'm done nothing but main events. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. I, I've and, had nothing less than. And to be fair, there there was some entanglement with Powerhouse, and that that's not what you signed up for. So you know, right now is not the right time to be using the word entanglement. From what the hell just happened at the Oscars? So that's true. That's true. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Easy. Yeah, very true. <laughs> oh man. Uh, so again, Friday night's a big night. Roh return to pay per view. Of course, you can watch it on Fight TV. Uh, you could go grab tickets rohtix.com if you're in the Dallas area. Now, I, I got a question, and a lot of people, and you probably get this on social media and all this other stuff, if you were able to, could we see maybe a, uh, I guess, a regroup of Hit Row, whether it be in Ring of Honor, AEW, somewhere down the line? I'm never ruling that out, but I think there needs to be more time to pass for that to happen. I need to, like, I th- there's still a lot of things I need to do, and I'm, like, running around the world right now. Yeah. Um but not just like pro wrestling, but like a lot of other ventures that I have going on. So it's it's, it's like I, I I want the hit makers to build the hit makers. I don't want people to always think Swerve's going to jump in and rock with them every time they show up. You yeah. know, I want them to. I want people to experience just what the hit makers of AJ Tahuti and Brianna Brandy have to offer. For sure, you know, like yeah, that's what I want. I want that. I want the best for them. I want them to thrive on their own and build their name on the independence. I built my name on the independence. You know, I want them to build theirs. And if I'm always like jumping in, I'm going to be suffocating that. And I don't want that for them. Right. For sure. And I've got a, a, a fun question now that a buddy of mine, Keith from the mixed tag podcast wanted to know, he's like, the earth is about to be invaded by aliens unless we could defeat them in a rap battle. Which five MCs are you choosing to save us all? Um, I'm I'm choosing Daylight, mm-hmm. who's an assassin. <laughs> Loaded Lux, who's one of the best battle rappers out there in the world ever. M. Yep. Yourself? I, I'm not necessarily a battle rapper. I'm, I don't do well in battles. I'm I, I, my my forte that I'm finding my strength in is like um, honestly making music. And creating so- songs and sound and orchestrating things and putting people together and formulating songs, battle battling is not my thing. Okay. Um, I put Jada Kiss up there. Ooh. That's a good one. Um, I put Jada up there, and one more. Um, so there's a difference between a great lyricist and a great battle rapper. So like, you got to separate the two sometimes. Right. Um. What's the boy's name? Um, because like I wouldn't put Jay Z in a battle rap, right? You know, yeah, he strikes more of like a, a studio guy. You know, like he's definitely a studio. And, yeah. yeah, like like a Lupe Fiasco would be a studio rapper. Yeah, I think a lot of people don't realize how difficult or how much of a skill set you really have to have to just go in there blind and just do it. You know, I mean, yeah, it is, it I actually, and I put Pusha T in there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like that's a that's a guy that's like venomous. Yeah. 
for sure. You know, like the, I know a lot of I, I know a lot of artists that are like incredible, like just like I, I'm friends with Mickey Fax, who's one of the best like lyrical rappers. He can battle rap too, but I feel like his lyrical rap is just like on a whole different level. It's 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 insane. Well, those those are the five lines of defense against the alien. So that's that's, the, that's, that's, that's pretty that's solid. The right there. Yeah, that's pretty solid. Yeah. Um, where can um, where's the best place to keep both of you online? Do you have a, a social media you're more active on, or what? What are you? Uh, Twitter and Instagram. I'm um, active on both. Swerve confident, and I have a website where you can get merchandise, so you're not wearing just a plain shirt next time you interview me. Swervefconfident.com. You got it. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, is uh what about uh new music? We got new stuff on the way that you also want to talk about or just drop just drop Tears album with me and my man um Montezzi, Swerve City album titled Tears. We just dropped two music videos as well with me me and Montezzi featuring AJ Francis from the hit makers called Digits. The music video is out now and it's the song is streaming on all platforms. And we dropped the music video Tears, which was directed and shot by myself. And videographer Geo, Geo shot it. The man's incredible. We brought in like choreography and dancers shot on different sites. It's an incredible music video uh, album. Tears music video. Tears and check this all out. All this beautiful content and music videos and albums all on Swerve City Podcast YouTube page. YouTube.com backslash Swerve City Podcast. Go check it out. Go subscribe. We also have other content on there with interviews with Charlotte Flair and My Verse, another great my, uh, battle rapper. We got them two together on that. We had we just recently had Busted Open Radio up on the podcast, and we interviewed Dave LaGreca and Mark Henry. Nice. Um, Damian Priest is on there. We got interviews with Adam Cole, interviews with the Street Profits featuring Bianca Belair, Leo Rush with John Morrison and Taya. Um, Eddie Kingston, as of recently, um, Still, man, podcast guest to shame right now. You got all yeah. these people. Yeah, man. Like, yeah, and, we, and, tech, and we still got episodes on the Peacock Network as well. Source City Podcast is still on the Peacock Network under the WWE Conversation page. <laughs> well, we had like WWE Champion Drew McIntyre at the time on there. Rosenberg popped in there. Pat McAfee was on there. Yeah, everything's there. Well, yeah. I mean, of course, everything's going to be on pay-per-view Friday night, ROH with Supercard of Honor. You, Alex Zane, is going to be a hell of a match. Can we go ahead and possibly say that that's probably going to uh, be match of the night, match of the year category? That's a that's a stacked show. Yeah. So I feel like anybody can get it at that, uh, that night. Anybody can get it. It's up for everybody. But definitely, definitely we're going to go out of our way to – try to top it because that's what we do. It's in our nature. And it's going to be a fun show again. Uh, Ring of Honors, uh, Supercard of Honors going down. It's in Garland, Texas. You can grab tickets, rohticks.com if you're in the area. If you're not and you want to watch it and support the guys and girls, you can watch it on pay-per-view. You can watch it on Fight. Swear Strickland, it's been an honor to have you on the show. Uh, when you roll through Nashville, if you're doing music or if you're doing a show, wrestling show, love to have you in studio and we'll uh, get you in person. Absolutely, man. I'm down. Set it up.